Edmonds meeting with record labels, okay? I feel like I should explain every industry term. Today I said independent artist and I was like, oh, I need to explain that. Record labels, just for people who don't know, because most of you probably don't know. You probably heard the term and you think you know what it means, but maybe you don't. It's a company who has a shit ton of money if it's a big label and they have, and I'm talking about big labels, they're small labels. We'll talk about the big ones. For example, Republic Records, that's an, a record label. They have Ariana Grande, The Weeknd, I don't know, a bunch of other people. Those are the only ones that I know of. They have like a hundred artists. And they basically, every person under this umbrella, you can think of it as an umbrella, under this record label, gets a budget, gets a team, gets help from the record label. And then the record label has connections to other people, to Spotify, to you know social media apps, to the radio, to you know, print and photography and all this stuff, like all these different things that people need help with, the record label will connect that to uh, the artist that they are signing. So there's huge labels like Republic, and then like, you know, there's um, Atlantic Records, there's Warner Brothers, there's all kinds of record labels, and then there's small record labels. So they have smaller budgets, they have less money, and they have smaller connections. And those are generally for smaller artists. And so basically it's just, you get signed based on, if, if you get signed, you get signed based on how much a record label thinks you're gonna blow up essentially, or if you're already really big. So if a record label sees you and is like, oh, I think this person is gonna be really big, cause that's what record, oh, that's another thing. That's what record labels are really supposed to do. They're supposed to, and their goal is to find artists before they're huge so that they can blow them up and they can make money off of them and they can be responsible for them so that they have a better like name. It's like helpful. If everybody helps everybody, it's all part of the music industry. Some labels can be really bad. Some people can sign people People and then shelve them, which just means that basically you sign them and then you don't do anything with them, either because they're a competitor to the artists that you already have. So you're like, I'm going to sign them so I can get rid of this competition on the market or just because they signed them and then they stopped caring about them. Some labels get excited about an artist and then stop caring about an artist. So it can also be really risky to sign with somebody. People get screwed over with really, really bad deals. So if you get a ton of views on TikTok, a label will come to you and say, hey, I'm with Republic Records. And it's like, ooh, I'm with, and I'm not saying Republic Records is bad. This is just my example. So I'm like, oh, I'm with Republic Records, like a huge record label. We have Ariana Grande. We're going to sign you. Um, but some labels can t unintentionally or intentionally take advantage of small artists and offer them a bad deal where it's like, we, big record label, will give you 10% of your money in exchange for, we'll take 90%, which is actually what people do. This isn't like a joke. And we will, you know, help you. And then they won't help because contracts are kind of meaningless <laughs> in the music industry. So like you can sign a record label and it'll say, we'll put out four albums for you. We'll do this, we'll do that. We'll put you on a tour, whatever. Like they can say whatever. They can even put it in writing. Um, but then people cannot follow up on the contract. And as a small artist, if you get screwed over by a big record label, what can you do if they breach the contract? They don't follow through. Nothing. You can sue them but what the hell are you going to do against a label that has millions of dollars? You know, when it comes to lawsuits, lawyers are extremely expensive. So you can't, well, I should be a music industry teacher. <laughs> I should explain the music industry to dummies. Um, it's, is it hot in here or am I just sweating? I need to talk to you. Okay, I'll get off. Um, anyway, sorry guys. So you can sue them but they have more money than you. So ultimately they'll win. They'll just keep suing you back and then eventually you'll run out of money and then you can't. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the gist on record labels. I just got a hundred more viewers while I was talking about that. I guess people find that interesting. Um, yeah, so someone said, prove me wrong. A bad record label, Atlantic Records. I don't know. And honestly, I don't think you can label any record label bad or good because it just depends on the person who's working for the artist and the artist because record labels are enormous, especially ones like Atlantic Records. So they have people like, you know, I don't even know who's on Atlantic. Huge artists, tiny artists. They have artists that they screw over. They have artists that they don't screw over. I think every record label pretty much has that. Not intentionally, but you know what I'm saying. Or intentionally. I don't know. I'm saying there's bad people and there's good people in the industry and it comes down to humans. So that's why it's hard to know, like, this is a bad thing or this is a good thing. All right, guys, I have to get off live.